recognize the members of the cabinet who are here. I want to recognize the Deputy Prime Minister, Sean Richards, the Senior Minister and Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Van Samery, the Honorable Lindsey Grant, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, the Honorable Attorney General, Senator Byron, the Honorable Minister and in the Ministry of Health, etc., Ms. Wendy Colleen Phipps, our Cabinet Secretary, other distinguished representatives who are here, in particular the distinguished representative of the government of Venezuela and Maria representing Pidivesa Sinkits. Representatives of the media, again I bid you welcome former sugar workers, welcome. I want to thank you for coming out today and for joining us at this important press conference. It is a great day for St. Kitts and Nevis, and I'm proud because this government, in less than 45 days, will have announced three major policy initiatives, and this is only the beginning of the work which we are doing on behalf of the people. It is truly a new day for St. Kitts and Davis. It is a dawn of a new era of government that is for the people and by the people. I can with excitement and vigor state promises made, promises being kept. On April 7, 2015, that will end on food and medicine and funeral expenses. And on Monday this week, we were given EC $16 million grant from the government of Venezuela to assist in paying former sugar workers. Next week, we intend, with the help of God, to make a very special payment to the Nevis Island Administration in keeping with the Charlestown Accord, which we signed on the eve of the elections. We want the people of Nevis to know that we will keep every word that we have made to them. Many of you would have heard me saying throughout the campaign that an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And it is even more a tragedy when good people see injustice and do nothing. My government, the government of national unity, has seen an injustice and we have decided to do something about it because we are committed to work for the people. An injustice was done to many of the former sugar workers who worked these lands tirelessly Without these workers, the sugar industry, and by extension, our country, could not have survived. Sugar then was our oil. Except for most of the profits from the sugar industry, except that most of the profits from the sugar industry were made over centuries by non kittishans and divisions. Sugar in St. Kitts and Nevis should have been synonymous with a legacy and wealth for our federation. Instead, for many of the ordinary people, sugar became synonymous with exploitation and manipulation. The people of this great federation work these plantations. And we have some of the sugar workers here, like John Paul, Henny Ping, Vera, and Cairo and so on, they work with dignity and honor. They never asked for much. They never made a lot of money. And they ought to have a fair share of the wealth they have helped to create. 
a fair share of this nation's prosperity. So, on Monday, the good government of Venezuela, thanks to El Presidente Maduro, provided us with 16 million easy dollars to assist in paying our former sugar industry workers. Thank you. This will help us to correct a wrong that has been ignored for too long. And this sum of money allows us to bring a sense of justice and closure to the many aggrieved former sugar workers here. And I'm advised by an article written by Conway that we also have aggrieved workers in the sister island of Guyana. All these workers feel treated from their due and compassionate support in the 2005 settlement by the former regime. Ten years later, too many former sugar workers are still poor, some hungry, some without any savings in their account or even a memento to show that they gave back-breaking labor to an industry that was exacting on them and their families in terms of its demand for their labor and skill and time. That industry, for example, took 55 years of the life of Chemical Wilson and 55 years of the best years of Joseph Hercules. A sensitive and caring government must have known what Joe Hercules proclaimed on his deathbed at Draineff, the government robbers. Nobody got to tell me that they done me an injustice, end of quote. Joe Hercules died with a heavy heart. Today we come to breathe the life and hope of justice into the minds of the former sugar workers and the country at large. We have turned a new page, and we are righting the wrong done to the least and the meek of the earth, our former sugar workers. I want, on behalf of all of us, to thank the government of Venezuela for responding so quickly. It took two meetings with El Presidente Maduro, the visit of a hard-working technical team from Venezuela, and the production of a project proposal, thanks to Minister Wendy Phipps. Let's give her a round of applause. The job of follow-up rested in the capable hands of the Minister of Energy and with responsibility for Petro Caribe, the Honorable Ian Patches Leibert, who has just arrived. Give him a round of applause. I want to thank the Representative of Venezuela, His Excellency, the Ambassador representing the Bolivarian Republic here in St. Kitts for his work. And I want to thank all the people at PDVSA, in particular the General Manager for her leadership. Give them a round of applause. I want to say that since Monday, we have been looking at how we are going to move forward with this particular initiative. And in order to deal with this matter, I have decided to put in place an implementation committee. And this committee will be headed by Mr. Osbert de Souza in the office of the Prime Minister. And it will include several other persons drawn from the government and the broader national community including, of course, the Labor Commissioner, a nominee from PDVSA St. Kitts. And we hope to include former managerial level workers of the SSMC, representative from among the former workers, a nominee from the Ministry of Agriculture and Finance, and such other specialist skills, including legal, that would be required as we go about addressing this matter in a very transparent and fair way. The committee will be given three weeks 
to submit its first report to the cabinet and all issues pertinent to the successful implementation of this important initiative. To the former sugar workers who have been aggrieved, I say be patient. We have started to address your needs and we are doing what the government before failed to do. And it failed to do it notwithstanding it had on record letters from hundreds of former sugar workers who had asked for a revisit of their particular circumstances and that justice would prevail in their case. We promise you that we will stand by you and today I am standing on the fulfillment of this promise. And in due course, more particulars will come from you through the special implementation committee that cabinet has approved. Of course, in that we will have a media personality so that the information can come to you. And we are going to do this carefully. We are not going to be hurry because we well know hurry dog with the Itrakan, and we want a cook con for the sugar workers of St. Kitts and Nevis. I want to say a brief word in relation to the VAT measure, which we have introduced, and which will bring relief to you come 7th of April 2015. It is another, in fact, the first major promise which we made to the country of St. Kitts and Nevis, and we have fulfilled that one, as we will fulfill each and every one that we have made in due season. In due season, we will. I want to make it clear that the government intends that every bit of savings that ought to have been generated from the exemption of VAT from food and medicine and funeral expenses, that those savings must be passed on to you. In that regard, I had directed that the financial secretary, along with the head of the Consumer Affairs Department, along with the head of Customs and the head of Inland Revenue, should meet and come together and discuss how we are going to use the network of the government system to ensure that you are not denied and that the full benefit of the promise we make, we made to you, that you enjoy the fruits of your unity government. I should say to you equally that that committee has since met with representatives of the food industry in particular, and I should say food and distribution, leadership of Rams, for example, Best Buy, and the Chinese supermarket, to get them to understand that this is serious business. And we do not want them to mark up their goods and jewelry so that the benefit to you, it would be lost. We have warned them that the government will do all in its power to ensure it does not happen. And so we give them a gentle reminder. We said fairness for all. And we want them to be fair with the consumers. And we will use the network within government to ensure that that fairness is being realized. I give them a word of encouragement and I give them a word of warning that we will not allow price gouging to take place in the context of our efforts to bring relief to the people. So that is going to be an important message. The third important matter which I must make reference to in more specific terms, and I'm delighted that the Honorable Premier is here, because Premier Amri has over the years been fighting a good fight 
and a courageous fight on behalf of all the people on the island of Nevis. And while he is not a man to get easily flustered, there are many occasions when his efforts were in vain because he found in the leadership of the rejected administration a leadership that wouldn't listen to reason and a leadership that wanted to overturn to the back door the decision of the people of Nevis to put in place a CCM administration. That leadership is now gone. And we committed to the people of Nevis certain specific things in the Charlestown Accord. And one, we recognize that from the information then publicly available to us, that Nevis was not getting its fair share. And we said while we could not go back and undo every wrong that had been done, as a sign of good faith, as a measure of our commitment to a new order, and a fairer order that we will make a gratuitous payment to the Nevis Island Administration as soon as was convenient. Today I am pleased to advise that the Cabinet has agreed that we should offer historic budgetary support to the Nevis Island Administration in the first instance of EC $10 million. This sum, of course, will be transferred to the account of the NIA once our financial secretary has been advised by the officials in the Ministry of Finance in Nevis how to effect this particular significant transfer. You haven't heard much in the bygone years of such generosity being extended to the people of Nevis. It is happening today because we have a new beginning, thanks to you. I, for my part, have long affirmed my deep and unbroken link and kingship and love for the people of Nevis, the island from which my father got finished with hailed. And equally, I have often complimented my colleague, the Honorable Premier, Van Samri, for his avuncular wisdom and support, particularly since the launch of the Team Unity in September 2013. I give every assurance that we will be fair, that we will be honest and we will be transparent, not only in our dealings with the island of Nevis and the administration there, but with all the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Again, I want to thank the people for their support. We will never take the support and the votes of the people of this country, who against incredible odds determine that a change must come to St. Kitts and Nevis. And so we will continue to work for you, work honestly and in a determined way to satisfy your felt needs. Again, thank you very, very much for coming out today and for listening. And as we said on Monday, to God be a glory, we are off to a fresh start.